What's happening folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more punk rock, and we're going back to the Dead Kennedys for the first time in a while. Luca is very interested, probably more in the lap than the Dead Kennedys, I guess we'll find out. But yeah, we're going to go back to Bedtime for Democracy, their final album, and people who know the story know that this album was put together in the wake of their trial, their obscenity trial, which is one of the more ridiculous stories in the history of music, and thankfully, they were acquitted of the charge of distributing harmful matter to minors. Um, and, you know, people viewed it as an attempt to censor a group that was very publicly critical of government entities and so on. But the point is, after that trial and in the wake of their third studio album, um, Frankenchrist, they essentially had a lot of tensions within the band, not only because they had had to spend so much time and money um, you know, hiring lawyers and going through that process, but also because the poster that was included in that album, Frankenchrist, which essentially was why a very overzealous DA tried to bring the charges against them in the first place, um, it, a couple members of the band didn't want it to be included when it was, precisely because they thought it would draw undue attention. It was an H.R. Giger painting, and, you know, H.R. Giger, an internationally renowned surrealist um, artist, but yeah, in the wake of their acquittal and the trial, there was a lot of tension and the band just couldn't stay together. It was the end for the band. So this album was released posthumously, posthumously, if you will, uh, and it includes more songs than any of their other albums. I think it's like 21, 22, something like that. Uh, let's see, it does say it here, doesn't it? Yeah, 21. So it was sort of like, well, everything that we have left that we've recorded or that we've worked on, we're just going to put on this. Um, so some people don't view this album as having as high a quality as the previous ones. I think it's fantastic. And maybe when I first got into the Dead Kennedys, it was my favorite. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great album, even though it's a sort of sad ending to the Dead Kennedys history. Now, I say ending, people will know eventually the guys came back without Jello, which to me is like you know, trying to have the Beatles without Lennon or McCartney, it just, it doesn't really make sense, but, um, yeah, there's a long, complicated history of the Dead Kennedys, which I've talked about in other videos, so I'll save that for those who, um, have already heard it, but, yeah, we're gonna listen to One Way Ticket to Pluto, which is a very funny tune to me for a couple reasons. One, it's another one that just screams Jello Biafra's lyrics, because it takes a political and socio-technological criticism, but then renders it in this crazy, almost surrealist type of way, which a lot of Jello's lyrics have comedy mixed with a stinging cultural critique. So that is very much where this one is at. And the idea is that these powerful figures in American government, and, you know, this was in 86, but it's sort of, you know, referencing the original, like, moon missions and so on, the heady days of NASA in the 60s. But it's saying that, you know, we want to build now, in the 80s, this Star Wars program, which, you know, Ronald Reagan had an idea to put, like, lasers in space, and it feels like a very apropos song, because we're talking now in the news about countries putting satellites in low Earth orbit deliberately to, like, weaponize space, and there's an increasing drive among countries. It's a, it's another space race, or another, well, yes, another space race, but another arms race, and in the worst frontier, not, you know, the final frontier, perhaps, but the worst frontier, and that weapons from space open up a whole new can of worms in terms of destruction and the ethics of doing this and so on. So it seems like a very appropriate time to listen to the song, but the idea is that the leaders, the political and military leaders, take senators who've been critical of their Star Wars plan and, you know, Senate Intel Committee meetings and hearings, and they take some distinguished scientists who perhaps have spoken out about weaponizing space, as well as a chimpanzee, because, hey, you got to have a monkey in space to test what space does to biology and so on. So they put them all on this spaceship and they say, hey, you're going to go out and you're going to study things and you're going to report back to us and so on. And then once they shoot them out, they're like, hey, guess what? Uh, you're not actually going where you thought you would be going. We don't know fully where you're going, but you're not going to come back, and we designed it that way, because you're too pesky with your questions, and you ask us too many uncomfortable things, and you want to oppose our Star Wars program and our weaponization of space, so we're just going to send you off on a one-way ticket to Pluto, and you're never, ever coming back. So it's it speaks to a, an attempt to maintain cultural and political control, but also the use of technology to increase the dangers for humanity. So it's very Dead Kennedys, very Jello Biafra. Let's hear it. This is The Dead Kennedys from Bedtime for Democracy, 1986, and the tune is called One Way Ticket to Pluto. Or maybe it would be. Hello. 
It's very much what the Dead Kennedys were in many of their songs. I say that. They have a lot of slower and, especially on Frankenkreis, more like psychedelic punk type tunes. But a lot of their songs are fast and wicked and crazy and they're over within a minute and a half. And this one is very much in that vein. So, yeah, it's, as I said, it's funny. Um, it's sharp in terms of its lyrics. It's driving in terms of the sonics. I now am remembering, and I don't really hear it. I, like, we just listened to the song. It didn't even occur to me until... I was thinking about if there's anything I'm missing. Apparently, according to Discogs, and presumably in the booklet, which... Where's the booklet for this one? It's over here, that's right. Uh, presumably this is credited in there as well, but it says that there was a synthesizer, or I think it's keyboards maybe, but a keyboards played by Tim Jones on this one. I don't really know who this Tim Jones is, but uh, according to Discogs, uh, there was some keyboard synthesizer in this one, and it was played by Tim Jones, so... In any case, very Dead Kennedys. Let me know what you think. Luca is also very intrigued, but she is also sleepy. Uh, and yeah, I will see you next time. Peace.